all these little exercises here actually point to some things that we should keep in mind as we are doing these problems. And that's first, if the electric field and the path vector are in the same direction, then what, what did we get for delta V? What sign was it? It was negative, wasn't it? Because the, we said that the electric field was, the electric field was pointing down and the path was pointing down. Okay. Uh, the dot product E dot DL, if they're in the same direction, will give you positive, but you're multiplying by a negative uh, sign. There's always this negative sign out front. So delta V is less than zero. Okay. If the electric field and delta L are in opposite directions, then delta V was, what do we get there? Positive. Okay, it was something greater than zero. If the electric field and delta L are perpendicular, then delta V was zero. Delta V was equal to zero. Okay? So it's very easy to get the signs confused when you're doing the, uh, doing the calculations. If you keep these rules in mind, it can help you check your work. Okay? Now what is the significance of this? Well, again, think back what to what the definition is. We're talking about potential energy per unit charge. If you have an electric field, let's, so let's think about a positive charge, for example. If I had a positive charge that moved along this path and the electric field was in that direction, what would happen to the kinetic energy of the system? What would happen to the kinetic energy of the proton? it would increase, right? So delta K would be greater than zero, but the potential energy of the system would decrease, right? It would go down. So delta U would be less than zero. Well, if I take this delta U and divide it by a positive charge, then that gives me delta V. That should also be less than zero, negative, right? So if you can think about if, about the delta V is giving you what happens to the potential energy in the case of a positive charge moving along that path. Okay, Again, there doesn't necessarily have to be a charge moving there, but you can use the positive charge as a test case to, to think about the energy. The change in the potential energy for the case of a positive charge has got to be the same as the change of electric potential. Okay, And then, in this, like as we saw in this last case, what if we don't have a situation where the field is parallel, anti-parallel, or, or perpendicular. If, if the field was like this and the path was down, well, you can still check the direction because you can always break up the field into components. You can say there's a component of the field that's perpendicular to the path, and there's a component of the field that's parallel or anti-parallel, depending on the direction, to the path. The perpendicular component isn't going to contribute to the delta V, right? Because we know that any field direction that's perpendicular to the path gives you a delta V of zero. So the only thing that matters here is what component of the field lies along that path vector. If it's in the same direction as that path vector, you get a positive, or excuse me, you get a negative. If it's in the opposite direction, if you had a field like, uh, like so, then this delta V would be less, uh, excuse me, greater than zero. This delta V would be greater than zero. This delta V would be less than zero. Okay. So there's always sorts of ways to, to break up the uh, result to check it. And again, also the other way we can think about it is the angle. If that's theta, then we can say delta V is negative E times the magnitude of E times the magnitude of delta L times the cosine of the angle between them. In this case, the cosine is a uh, positive, so you get a negative delta V. In this case, the cosine is a negative, you get a positive delta V. Okay. 